Hello and welcome to the series of DevOps project. The name of this project is Continuous Integration with Jenkins and Tools. So this is the scenario. Let's say you have a product development and Agile SDLC is in motion. So bunch of smart developers in an Agile team will regularly make code changes. So there'll be multiple code changes every day and all this code needs to be tested because this is what actually is building your product. So this code needs to be regularly built and tested. So usually in an enterprise, there will be a separate build and release team who will be doing this job of building, testing and releasing the code. Or if it's a small industry, then They'll be, it will be developer's responsibility to merge and integrate this code. So yes, there are regular code changes also called as commits or pull requests. Developers will be dependent on build and release team usually to test the code and move it to the next level in the release cycle. But not so frequently the code will be tested. If there are any bugs or error, it will be known late. Due to this, bugs and errors in the code keep accumulating. And let's say these got accumulated. Now problem goes more deeper. Now developers need to rework to fix these bugs and errors, which is a time consuming process. And the teams would be already approaching the deadline. So product owners really need to test the code as fast as it's building. But that's not possible because the build and release team is doing a manual process and also there are approvals and ticketing system in place which delays the process more further. So solution to this problem is regular build and test for every commit. So as soon as there is a code change, the code needs to be built and tested at the same time. But if the process is manual, this will not be possible. So you need to have an automated build and release process. And whenever there is a build and test of the code, the developer should get notified automatically. So if there is a build failure, if the code is not passing your quality gates, or if there is any bug, any kind of error, the developers will be stopped doing whatever they're doing and force they'll fix the code. So if you have such kind of automation framework in place, which will regularly build and test the code for every commit, then you're also removing dependency of developers from build and release team. Ta-da! This process itself is called as continuous integration process. So input to this process is any code commit and output will be a well-tested artifact. And all this will happen automatically. Now this well-tested artifact then can be deployed to servers for further software testing or performance testing or load testing. And then if everything is good, it can be promoted to production. So may sound simple, but there'll be actually so many tools connected together to complete this automated process. But this is a well worth investment because today's time is very demanding. There are regular feedbacks and demands for that developer really need to work regularly and make regular code changes to improve the product. So in today's time, you should definitely have a continuous integration process. Let's talk about benefits of continuous integration pipeline. First benefit that you obviously get is shorter mean time to repair because here you are not accumulating the bugs or errors as soon as they are found they are fixed so it very well works with the agile team and there will be no human intervention so we're not dependent or the developers are not, not dependent on build and release or operations team to do this which saves a lot of time and obviously not to mention if there is any fault any bug any error it can be found out very quickly and can be isolated very quickly. So in this project, obviously we're going to set up a continuous integration pipeline. 
So now let's talk about the tools that we are going to use in this project. Starting with Jenkins. Jenkins will be your continuous integration server and main hero in this project. And as hero needs sidekick, our Jenkins hero will also need some assistant tool. Obviously, we are going to use a version control system. We're going to use Git and GitHub as the remote repository. And we'll have a Java code in that. And to build that Java code, we will need build tool Maven. We're also going to do some code analysis. So we are going to use first check style, which is a very simple code analysis tool. But there are more sidekicks. There are more tools. We'll use Slack for notification. We can also have an email integration. So we get email notifications. We'll use Nexus Asana type to store our artifact and also to download dependency for Maven. So OSS Asana type Nexus will be our software repository. We're going to get more deeper into code analysis. So we'll be using SonarCube server. So we're going to scan our code with SonarCube scanner and check style. And then we're going to publish our result into SonarCube server dashboard. And to set up these servers, Jenkins server, Nexus server, SonarCube server, we are going to use AWS platform. We'll use AWS EC2 instances. On EC2 instances, we'll set up Jenkins server, Nexus server, and SonarCube server. Okay, so let's reiterate our objective. There'll be quick fa fault isolation, shorter MTTR, Faster turnaround time. So any new request, any new feature change needs to be done. It can be done quickly without disrupting too many things. So these are our objective to set up a continuous integration pipeline. All right, let's achieve our goals now. Before we get started, we'll see continuous integration pipeline architecture. So you'll have a very clear understanding what we are trying to achieve. Okay, let's see the workflow first. So developer makes a code change, a commit to version control system or source code manager. An automation tool will automatically fetch that code, build it, run a unit test and return the outcome on Slack channel. So we'll be using Slack anyways. The next phase will be, it will run code analysis and code analysis, there will be gates, quality gates. If the threshold, if the, it uh, is not passing the threshold, okay, then it's good. If it's passing the threshold, then a notification will be sent on Slack channel. If this is good, it goes to the next level. Then the software will be built it will be packaged and the artifact will be uploaded and its outcome notification will be also sent. The artifact or the software will be stored into artifact repository. If all these stages are successful, then the software can be promoted to the next level. If there is any failure, then the notification will be anyways sent. Once the notification is received by the developer, developer for any failure, they will make the code change, they'll make the fix and the process repeats again. So there will be regular code commits, continuous code commits, and this process will run continuously. So that's why the name came continuous, continuous integration. So this process will be automated. So this can be run multiple times in a day if you want. Okay. Now let's see architectural design by using all the tools. So a developer will make code change by using his or her IDE, like Visual Studio or IntelliJ. And that tool, that IDE will be connected to a Git repository. So developer makes a code change and commits. This, this commit will be synced with a remote repository, will be using GitHub. So as soon as GitHub receives a commit, our continuous integration server Jenkins will detect that and fetch the changes, fetch the latest code. So it will have an integration with GitHub. Then Jenkins 
you know jenkins will be running some code test unit test basically which is part of your build process if there is any failure the notification will be sent if it passes code analysis will be done on the code by using check style and a sonar cube scanner so in this project we'll have multiple code analysis tool so it will generate some report and this report we are going to publish on sonar cube server sonar cube server will display the result and will also have quality gates a quality criteria if you are passing the quality criteria we can put move to the next level or a failure notification will be sent and the process really stops so you see we are putting brakes at every level if there is any failure it automatically breaks if not the process continues automatically anyways so once the code analysis is done then we'll build the artifact and we have java code so we are going to use maven build tool if there is any build failures any build errors notification will be sent while the source code is getting built it will need some dependency our maven will need some maven dependencies those dependency we will be storing in nexus repository so maven will automatically download all the dependency from maven repository which is in nexus oss sonar type nexus once the artifact is packaged once the software is really created then the software we are going to upload it back to nexus sonar type repository so really using nexus sonar type repository for two cases one is to download dependencies from and the second is uploading our artifact or storing our artifact so we're going to version and store the artifact so every time this continuous integration process runs we'll have a new version of software and based on requirement and choices any version then can be selected from nexus repository and can be deployed to servers okay so now you can really pause the video and watch the architectural design once again let's see step by step process of our execution first we'll log into our aws account we're going to create login key for our servers we'll create security group for three server jenkins nexus and sonar cube and we're going to create these ec2 instances where we are going to set up these servers with user data so automatically they will be provisioned after that we'll conduct some jenkins post installation and we're going to install some plugins once our jenkins is ready we'll set up nexus repository we're going to set up three repositories in nexus for maven we'll do some sonar cube post installation steps in jenkins we're going to create multiple jobs first we're going to create a build job then we're going to set up slack notification once we integrate jenkins with slack channel we'll test this and then we'll create another job check style code analysis job then we'll integrate our jenkins with sonar cube server a sonar cube scanner job will be created if all this is successful we will upload our artifact to nexus repository finally we'll integrate all these jobs together with build pipeline and we'll set automatic build trigger so if there is any code change jenkins will detect that automatically and this entire process will run and we'll test this with our ide with intellij we are going to make a code change commit and then see the entire execution and finally we'll do cleanup all right let's get into action now